Captain Mike. In today's video, we're going to talk about UV resins, and that's resins that cure with uh, only UV light, whether it be sunlight or artificial UV light, whatever. Uh, we're going to see if there's actually any difference in this product, which is a uh, UV resin used in a 3D printer, or this resin, which is just a supposedly a UV glue. Uh, it's a just another type of resin. I featured this particular product in my video that has to do with uh, different kinds of resins. Uh, so that's why I have this. These resins here, both this one. Uh, 1,000 milligram bottle of gray and this 500 gram, milligram or grams, this is milliliter, 1,000 milliliters, so this one says 500 grams, uh, don't do metrics too awful well, uh, we'll try to get them right. Anyway, this, the difference right off hand is if you buy this big bottle, this 1,000 um, milliliter, uh, it cost mm, $32 on Amazon. And this one is 500 grams. It cost about uh, 48 now, I don't know what the difference is. Uh, why one's cheaper than the other. Uh, this one being gray and this one being transparent. Uh, I picked them up at, the, at a bin store, which is a... Uh, an establishment that uh, is prevalent here in the United States that just resells Amazon returns and things. And you can go in there different days of the week and the prices are different. And nobody knew what this stuff was. I picked it up. Uh, this bottle was right pricey. Uh, it was only like, I think, uh, 120 grams and it was like $17, something like that. So this is a lot more expensive. Uh, in the other video, I basically compared this to the two-part resins as a glue, as a way to join things together and see how it would work. So I have a couple of other things that we're going to show you here that I've done, not with this, okay? I want to show you this basically just to show you the comparison in the prices. Uh, I'm going to show you what I did with this item right here, the gray, and uh, this item right here, which is the translucent. Okay, now this is the box, and according to the box that it come in, as you can see, it comes in all these different colors. I didn't have a choice. I picked, like I said, picked it up at the bin store. What they had is what I bought. It was gray. So this is what I've, I've, I've got, and. Uh, you can get it in all these different colors to make your little items in your 3D printer. What else will it do? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Okay, here is all the stuff that I have run tests so far. And the test that I have run is, of course, using the gray um, poly, photo poly mirror resin and the transparent. Uh, that's the uh, that's the test that I run with this and what I did is poured this resin in molds and in uh, uh, I, I seen how it would mold and how the UV would affect it uh, since this is is UV cured and I used sunlight uh, stuck it out in the Georgia Sun and let the natural UV do its stuff so let's kind of just see what we've got here Starting with the gray, the first thing that I used with these uh, molds like this, these very flexible molds, I used two kinds. I used uh, the, the uh, so, sort of translucent uh, type and I used uh, some molds that I made that are totally opaque. Let me show you what happens. Now, with, we'll go with this opaque one first because it was it so far has not been the best uh, results. The, it cured pretty quick out there on the top, but as you can see, 
See how yucky mess? It will not cure any further than about mm, 16th of an inch, maybe. Okay? And then it it's, doesn't cure anymore. If you leave this there, it'll cure down here. See, this cured, and, and it left a little bit of, uh, of stuff right here, and that cured. If I stick this out in the sunlight, this here will cure, and the back side will cure. But it will not cure all the way through the first time on this purplish mold that I made. Now, the next thing that I did was I tried to make the same thing, poured some purple or the gray uh, resin into this mold, and it's translucent. So light is gonna pass through it better. How much better? Well, pretty doggone good. That came out really, really, really good. It's a nice resin uh, casting of this Egyptian figure, and it popped right out. That was a complete success. So, of course, you know, I had to push the envelope just a little bit further. So, I have this one. I fill this one up since both of these will fill slap up to the edge and create more than just that little image. It's very thick. And I don't know whether the backside's cured or not. You're going to be the first to find out. So, see how easy it comes out. Oh, and you see it didn't cure all the way through. So that's a no-go. You see what it did? It cured really nice down to about an eighth of an inch. And I think, I think I'll have to run another experiment. If I was to cure the top so that this wouldn't run out and flip it over, I think it would cure the bottom too. It's just translucent. It's not transparent. And so the UV couldn't get to that and it made a kind of a yucky mess. So that's kind of a half no-go on curing something. Now, the little, this little one right here, it popped out just fine. It went all the way through, okay? So you could make little bitty objects if you've got little silicone molds using this stuff. Uh, and it's cheaper than the glue. It's, I mean, this stuff is much, much, much cheaper if you buy it like that. So it would work for molding like that. Now, I did mold using some of the clear, okay? And it did strange, weird things. This is the backside. It kind of raised up, moved around, did weird stuff, and turned kind of yellowish. And it's still a little sticky. So as we speak, I have another uh, test outside in the sunlight, trying to redo this to see if it'll do any better in, in, in the sunlight today. Uh, kind of working, but not exactly what I thought it would do. The last mold test that I have is in this plastic stuff. It's just regular old plastic, okay? Some old soap molds that I had that I don't ever use. So I poured some in here, and it's leaf, and it was stuck pretty good. I had to keep flexing it and flexing it and flexing it, and it came on out, but it broke the mold. I flexed it a lot, and it broke the mold right there, okay? So that could use that mold over again even though it broke, but it did cast a really nice leaf. Again, this is perfectly clear on the top and the bottom. I would imagine that you could cast a, well, a little thicker, but again, that's about an eighth of an inch, and it made a pretty good leaf. So we can call that one a success. And other than the molds that I have outside that are curing as we speak, I wanted to see how well the uh, photopolymer stuff stuck stuff together, okay? Now, the only one that I have to compare are these two here. And these two here are, uh, one of them is using this UV glue, which is more expensive. And the other one is using the transparent or translucent glue. I take that back. This one here is using the gray, okay? I don't think I tried the translucent. I'll have to try the translucent and see how it works. But as you can see, the gray didn't work. It popped right loose. Now whether my glass wasn't clean or not, it's going to take some more tests. And I may do them before this video is over with. It just 
I'm not real sure about that. This one seemed to do pretty good. It, it's, 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 uh, it's stuck. So I'm going to use some of this on some glass, and I'm going to use some more of this. Well, actually, I may not do this because this one works pretty good, but I might do another comparison and see how they stack up. But the gray did not stick as well on the perpendicular piece. Okay, and we had that little edge right there to glue, and it just didn't stick. Now, the next one we'll try, and I haven't really tried to separate any of these except just one or two. This one is some black glass, COE 90, which does not matter, but I just stuck uh, the gray photo polymer stuff, and you see it did not stick it. Boom. I pulled it loose with my fingers. So, we don't know whether it's just the gray or what. The glue is hard. All right, let's go further. This one, of course, is transparent uh, glass. Just two pieces of glass. And again, I skeeched some gray in there. Let's see what happens. I won't be careful not to cut myself. That's stuck. That's stuck. It's not coming loose, at least the way I think it ought to. Next piece that I did a, a, a trial on or test on was two pieces of acrylic. Okay, again, I used gray. Oh, you can see it. Yeah, I can see it coming apart. You can pull it apart. So it did not stick the acrylic together, although it's hard. All of the, the glue did cure. It just did not stick it. This one is two pieces of ceramic tile. And it looks like it's stuck. Now why, it, maybe it's because it's more porous. That porous porosity may have something to do with it, but that stuck pretty good for whatever the reason. Two pieces of Corian, okay? Let's try the Corian without cutting myself. It's, it's stuck. It's stuck good, trust me. Again, why it's stuck? and the ceramic stuck and overall the glass stuck black glass did not stick nor did the acrylic the last test was on a some wood very porous now the first time i did this piece of wood it did pop apart so i figured that just give me uh, some substrate to re-glue and maybe it wouldn't be quite as porous and so we're going to see if it'll come apart uh -huh. No problem. So wood doesn't stick. The black glass for some reason didn't stick. And these stuck. And I'm going to re-glue these again using some of the clear along with this one here. I'll do some clear. And uh, we'll come back at the end of the uh, video whenever I have the molds cured outside and we'll see how all of that does. Now the other thing that I want to, to show you that I did do and it really was neat was I took the clear and I'm sure you could do the same thing. Oh, this is not clear, this is trans translucent, excuse me. But I'm sure you could do the same thing with the gray. The gray is just going to affect the color tones. But I took and mixed different colors and fact is, if I'm not mistaken, I am mistaken. I used the gray on all of these, okay? I used the gray on all of these. In my age, you sometimes forget what you did. There's my test piece. That's gray. Hard as a rock. This is all on a piece of plate glass. This one right here, I mixed some teal uh, oxide and then I put too much it turned real nice and dark the less powder you put the lighter that's going to be but it did not affect the curing process of that okay the next one I used some of this iridescent true red and this is what you get and it's nice and hard for this one right here I added some real fine glitter just Walmart glitter, that's all it is in the craft department. It did not affect the curing. And lastly, I mixed this right here, which is a color shift paint. Now I've got several colors of this, but I just used this one. And it's liquid. It's liquid 
paint. It is basically a water uh, uh, cleanup paint, which means it's an acrylic. And as you can see, it mixed pretty doggone good. And I didn't maybe mix it enough. There's a little purplish right there, and it turns into this nice lavender kind of color. And uh, it mixed and it got hard. It, it also did not affect the, uh, uh, the curing. The only thing that I noticed that, that basically on these three right here, oh, look at there. This is neat. That popped up off the glass. But it cured. It cured. So if you wanted to make some colors to put in one of these molds that would work, that one popped up. Let's see if the rest of them pop up. Well, they might have given time. But as I was saying, the only thing that I notice right off is this one and this one, and to an extent this one, are more matte in color than they are, or shine, than they are shiny. That one appears to be shiny, but probably because of the glitter. And of course, this one here is a good semi-gloss. So, you can color the stuff. And it looks like you can color it with acrylics, although it doesn't seem to stick to glass as good and you can do it with dry and the dry seems to stick just fine so coloring is something that you could do with this and it would work out just just wonderful and um, again you know you know that worked out pretty good but it did kind of mess the mold up a little bit and eventually your mold would totally mess up so what we're going to do now is i'm going to retest these right here using the clear or transparent resin and when I bring them back in it, they should cure in an hour or so and then when I bring these back in I'll bring in the molds that I was redoing and we're gonna see if they did this ugly mess right here okay I've got all my tests completed and let's see if we can wind this video up uh, I let all my tests uh, sit outside for, uh, actually from the afternoon, I started them until the next morning before I brought them in, for a reason. As I mentioned, we're dealing with UV resins, and they're not designed to do what I'm doing with them. I'm just trying to find out what I can do with stuff I find at a bargain or whatever. So, UV light as you know comes from the sun and it this stuff is not really designed for that strong of a UV it's designed for a artificial UV source from a 3D printer and the UV rays from the sun they kind of they change they come straight down middle of the day and then as the day progresses they come in at an angle that humidity temperature i'm sure all of that has got something to do with the results that I've got. And I've went over my colors and I've went over what kind of colors I used, some of the things that did stick and some of the things that didn't. And I, re I tried to re-stick them using the clear or transparent uh, UV stuff. It seemed to stick pretty good using this uh, and they stuck real good using this UV resin that's basically designed for that. Uh, so here's what we've got. Tell you right now, the wood don't work, okay? Forget wood and any kind of UV resin. That's a no-go, okay? The next thing I tried was uh, gluing glass perpendicular. And the reason that you'd want to do that, let me just show you right quick, is I made, whoop, I made these right here, okay? These little stands. And I can't remember what kind of glue I used on this, but the idea is if the UV resin would work, you could do this. That's the reason for the perpendicular. You know, it holds, it holds stuff like that, okay? So that's the whole reason behind the perpendicular part of my tests. So, as you see, the gray didn't work real good. It popped loose. Will the transparent pop very easily? Yes, it did. So, I would say this is a no-go. These are a no-go for glass at a perpendicular with a small foot, okay? You may have better luck. Uh, the next thing I did was plastic or acrylic, same thing. I smeared the glue and it pops pretty easy, so that didn't work. 
opaque black glass. Didn't work either. So why these worked, I don't know. And they probably would pop. This is ceramic. It probably would pop, but it is appears to be holding good. This on on Corian's appears to be holding very good. And I'm not even gonna try this glass because it might cut me. But anyway, those three did real good. But as you remember, I had some problems with the gray and a uh, 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 a transparent mold. So you know, I didn't. I just had UV coming down on the back side. It cleared it to cured it to, to right there. I put it back out there and you can see it cured it on the inside. Okay, so it cured that. Ended up with a nice little lily like that. Okay, but uh, that was not the, you know, that wasn't the, what I was trying to do. Uh, so what I did was I poured some of this into, into the, some molds to just see what would happen because for some reason, this UV poly, uh, what's it called? Uh, photopolymer uh, wants to wants to deform on top. It doesn't want to be smooth. It, it's kind of got a greasy feel. Now, they molded not good. See, it, again, same problem. I have a void here, as you can see. So that's a no-go, okay? This whole video is probably a no-go. I did a butterfly again. Again, it popped up. And these don't do real good. And the reason these don't do good is they're opaque. Okay, they're opaque. And they just, they just don't cure all the way through. Now, I took this stuff and I put it in a transparent mold or, or translucent mold. So we'll see how that does, okay? Now, that did good. It cured all the way through. Yeah, we'll get it over here in the middle where we can try to see it. So this little Neferidi or whatever her name is, uh, she did really, really good using this glue. Uh, and here we go with whoever this guy is. Uh, it's kind of a Maybe a Ramesses or something. I don't know, but it did pretty good too. They come right out. They've got good detail. They're perfectly clear and Just for grins and giggles. I took one and I filled it completely full and Put some color in it. I put some of this in it So it did not do good Okay I'm saying that the colorant and the photo polymer stuff doesn't work really good for this. It will work good on thin stuff and you can color it so you could do some stuff with it. Um, but overall it's not uh, you know it cured in this okay but it just overall I'm getting a gooey mess inside okay I like to put that back outside let it cure in the sunlight then pop it all out and clean the mold up uh, those worked out pretty good now just to kind of show you uh, uh, this is what regular resin does right here okay this is just a regular two-part resin I poured it an hour ago and popped out and got this pretty little baby in it and it's of course chemically cured got nothing to do with what this video is about. I just kind of wanted to show you that. Uh, to give you a couple of tips, and then I'm going to quit, is a hypodermic like this works really good. This is not a needle, hypodermic needle. This is something that is used for uh, loading uh, ink into cartridges. It's real blunt right here. But it works great, and you can also take that off, and you can pull this material up and squeeze squeeze it into the molds if you wanted to experiment some more. I also use one of these sometimes to tack things in place. This is a, a UV pen. This end has uh, the glue in it, the UV glue. This end has a little light that shines. And you can tack things and it works pretty quick and pretty good. And uh, doesn't hurt to have a little pipette. If you have a pipette it helps you too. So, in closing, 
This is cheaper than this, but there's obviously some differences in some of this UV resin that says hard on it. And these two, which are photopolymer resin. Uh, a good bit cheaper. They'll all color. Some of them will, gray in particular, and probably all the other colors, hardens in a shallow mold. You could do shallow molding. You could probably use the transparent molds, but you'd have to harden it on the, like the way this one worked, you'd have to harden it on the top and flip it over, and let the sunlight shine on the back, and it would probably do it. I'll, I'll eventually get around to trying that, to do it that way. I just wanted to kind of play around with this. Another useless video. Uh, I get my hands on all this stuff cheap, and I just want to see where it goes. So... That's it. If you have questions or something you want me to try, this experiment is open for discussion and uh, don't know where we can go with it. But I'm sure that a lot of you agile minds out there can help me out, come up with some great ideas and a great idea for what we could use this for that I haven't even thought of. That's it. I won't conclude this video for right now and I'll come back and make another one if I have some outstanding ideas that come from you all or I think of something in a lucid moment. There we go. My video on these various UV resins. And I'm Captain Mike. And I'm out of here.